Good morning. It's Friday. It's time to get going and have a great day. But to have a great day, you need an espresso. <laughs> I need to work on my latte art. So what could that be? So, now we've got the coffee. Start the day. Mm. Friday. Definitely required that extra shot. So while I keep making the rest of my breakfast and wait for my bagel to toast, I um, wanted to kind of talk a little bit about what I've got going on today. So, as soon as I eat all these carbs, um, I'm gonna go exercise because I just think that why not? Eat the bagel, go for a really great walk in the neighborhood. Um, the weather's cooled off a lot outside, so I, I, wanna, I wanna go outside and go for a good walk. Plus, I know I need to go this morning. I've had a really busy week and a busy day, and I've been waiting until the afternoon or evening to go exercise, and that's just kind of not happening. Um, I'm not able to get a workout in just because I, I have a hard time like turning off, like switching off from work mode. So I'm trying to a couple times a week prioritize at least going for a walk. Um, yes. So after I do that, I need to go check on a uh, painting project that I've been helping with as far as picking paint um, and fixtures and everything um, in a house. Uh, that was my my parents bought and last weekend I spent some time painting a bedroom that used to be teal and unfortunately I did not video the before so the only way I can show you the before is to show you a picture and that sucks because I think it would have been a little bit more dramatic if I had videoed it um, so we went from this like 90s color teal to Revere Pewter, Benjamin Moore um, Revere Pewter. And uh, yes, it's a very in color right now, but it's gray, um, it's modern. I mean, to me it's, it's in their historical collection, so it's a little bit more classic, I guess, in a sense than maybe too cool of a shade of gray. And um, I think it came out really great. We did the rest of the painting in the, um, the living room and kitchen area has some high ceilings, so we brought in a painter to take care of that. And uh, we chose a really, really nice shade of white, and then painted the uh, mantle and the trim um, because they just we were showing their age. And the mantle was this stained wood, and it wasn't like an amazing stained wood or anything really to get excited about. So, uh, so yeah, painting it just seemed like a great solution. Um, because new millwork was not in the budget and I think it came out great. I think it came out really, really great. Um, so go check that out. And then, um, they put the chandelier up and some light fixtures and I worked really hard, um, to pick out some fixtures that I think are like dressier, but they were not budget breakers. So I really tried to stay within a, a pretty good budget, but also not end up with just whatever's on the shelf at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, I think that that's a really not great thing to do um, if you are buying a home as an investment property. Um, now they're buying to live in it, but if it was a home that you were gonna flip um, and maybe come in, look for a new buyer to come in, um, you know, a lot of buyers can tell. They can tell when things are coming straight from the Lowe's Home Depot showroom floor versus you went to the lighting store and, um, you know, went for something that was budget conscious, but yet maybe a little bit nicer and not quite so generic. Um, my bagel's burning. So anyway, I do have to go get pick up a fixture of mine at the light store and um, maybe we'll check out what's going on over there at the showroom. I love going in there, looking at things at Tesh Electric, so pretty. And then we will go make a Target run real quick, have something to return and I need to pick up for a friend of mine. Um, 
and then we need to make a few work calls, check in on a few things going on today, and then get all that done, try to put my work off till this afternoon, just because I'm meeting with a client this evening about some uh, farmland that maybe we're gonna sell, and uh, I, need to, I need to do some of the things. You have to reverse your schedule sometimes, and so today, that's exactly what's happening. I'm kind of doing more of that relax and home improvement things earlier in the morning, and then this evening, I'm gonna do some work. So, um, you know, eight to five, it's not, it's not really a thing, but also there are days when, uh, you know, you have a little bit slower morning because you have a faster evening. Um, oh, and I totally forgot to tell you, and this is just so important to me, but it came on so fast that I think I'm kind of trying to black out how stressful it is. I'm finally getting my kitchen redone. It has been two years and I'm getting my kitchen redone. So I probably need to show you around the old kitchen so I don't make the same mistake I did with the painting project. Mm. This is delicious. Treat yourself. Okay, real quick, I'm gonna run through this kitchen and, and explain to you what is going and what is staying and maybe talk about what used to be. So one of the biggest changes that happened in here, I mean, first of all, this is a galley kitchen, typical galley kitchen. I mean, this our townhouse was built in probably the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Open floor plans just weren't a thing. But anyway, when we moved in, we had this tiny, like six inch cream colored square tile in the kitchen. And it was really bad so we took it out and we had um, wood plank wood plank style herringbone pattern um, tile put in so I'm really pleased with how that came out I think it came out awesome um, shout out to Lacey uh, one of the agents in my office her boyfriend Jude did our tile and he is amazing Jude does a great job we are not going to take out the cabinets we are going to paint them um, I'm considering going with the color you can't really tell in this camera but I'm considering going with the iron ore by Sherwin Williams as the lower cabinet color and um, either alabaster or white dove as my upper cabinet color and then pearly white will be my wall color um, and then of course putting in white subway tile backsplash with a darker color grout so that being said these cabinets are not changing um, neither are these uppers but these this this like you know the kind like this pass-through area these cabinets are going we're gonna take those out open up the space we're gonna drop down the countertop to all be one height and um, if you can you cannot even see how terrible this texture is on this countertop but we bought our townhouse from my husband's grandparents and I'm not sure, we're not sure if it was them or if it was whoever maybe owned it before them, but we're pretty sure it was them. Um, they basically rhino lined the counter with this like textured paint to look like granite and it's terrible. It's impossible to keep clean. You can't tell if it's dirty and it's just, it's ugly. Like the colors just don't go with kind of what we're switching to. Um, I like a lot more marble. I, I like marble a lot. I wanted to put marble in this kitchen. Decided not to for a variety of reasons. I was okay with the possibility of pitting and whatnot. I was okay with it because to me, um, personally, I cook a lot. I like to bake. I like to entertain. And if my marble pitted or got etched, I read somewhere once that you look at it as... Um, you know it's just a sign of like life and when you see the etching like that's from the time you cooked with your daughter or whatever so it's sweet however the practical real estate side of me knows that uh, for resale while marble is still beautiful and people will still buy a house with marble in the kitchen it is something that some people are still very afraid of the care for and um, so we're going with a uh, dolomite which um, a lot of people also know it as uh, fantasy white or super white granite. 
um, but it's actually dolomite. It's somewhere between the hardness of marble and granite, and um, and it's really pretty. Like I'm really excited to get it put in because it has a lot of that color and texture and um, veining that I liked about the marble, and um, we got it in a leather finish. And I found a three centimeter thickness piece for the price of a two centimeter thickness piece at another stone yard. So, I mean, I thought that was a pretty good deal. Okay, back to the kitchen. So, we, um, I used to have all the uh, polished, I'm sorry, brushed nickel pulls in here, and slowly I'm switching to a, uh, I don't even know, yeah, I guess nickel, polished nickel, whatever, um, brushed. We are switching to polished nickel um, pulls, which, Poles are expensive if you've ever looked into pricing. So I did end up with um, these from the Martha Stewart line at Home Depot. Again, these cabinets will be painted. I think it's gonna make the poles stand out a lot more. What I do like about the polished nickel is kind of over time, they kind of get a nice patina on them and they can kind of look somewhere between like a gold and, um, and a silver. So almost like a mixed metal type there. They're really soft. I mean, there's no, hard spots anymore. I used to have some bars that I would catch on my leg before and um, just decided it was time to switch up the look and there's no way that I can really make my kitchen very formal. So for me, if you have a kitchen that just kind of feels very generic, you can do things like dress it up with fixtures, but you have to find the balance of what looks like it belongs in a giant old historical Victorian home on St. Charles Avenue in New Orleans versus what's actually practical for your life in your home. So I think that this kitchen's gonna come out really cool. Uh, before we had a um, just one fluorescent light box in this kitchen and it was bad, like the lighting was bad, it was ugly, everything about it was bad. So when we took that down and I knew I wanted a new light, um, my husband put in can lights. He did the can lights himself. And I know there's still a little bit of gap around there, but we haven't done a lot of the caulking uh, yet that we still need to do. And he ended up putting a beadboard ceiling. Again, we can't get too farmhousey in this townhouse. It just doesn't make sense. But we were able to um, add some, you know, interesting finishes to this overall boring kitchen. And um, I'm really pleased with how it came out. This is a super simple project. All of these were already white. Um, the planks are from Lowe's and it took them an afternoon to do. That's it. That's what we're doing to this kitchen. Demo's gonna start today or tomorrow. And um, basically I'm gonna be cooking off plywood for as long as it takes for my counter fabricator to complete my countertops. So I'm guessing a month probably more. If this goes anything like any other update, refresh, remodel that we've done to this house, two months maybe. I'm just walking down the row with a paint tray. I mean, who doesn't do that in their neighborhood? We're going to this little pink beauty right here. This one right here. One day it won't be quite so pink, but you know, you can do anything if you have some money, right? And we're getting a new roof. I'm the realtor that gets new roofs. Do the paint touch-ups. This new living room color looks so good. This mantle came out really nice. That's a Benjamin Moore white dove on the trim. Sherwin-Williams pearly white on the wall. And there's this giant window in the front that lets in a lot of light, so it looks really nice. Getting some new sconces to go up on the wall. They're not in yet. Um, and then a new fixture right there. And then, put this one in the kitchen. Pretty little antique, I mean, a oil rub bronze chandelier. It's only $160. It's real simple, pretty, same paint color in here. Okay, I didn't really think it was very fair to just leave you hanging with maybe what those rooms looked like before they were painted. So I'm gonna pull them up so you can see. 
so this was the living room before it was peach and um very dated this is the kitchen but this we're not dealing with right now but the dining area we have uh painted to be uh the same color as the living room now probably white um took that fixture down and replaced it so as you can see it's much a uh, bigger improvement over what was there before but this by far is my favorite transformation is the master bedroom taking down the drapery that matched the paint but painting this teal such an improvement you know i'm sure those colors were really really fashionable at the time but not anymore no they they need to go so my advice to sellers is always you know just take take a little bit of time get the home ready to sell and i mean you very well could turn more of a profit if you have the right paint colors in your home um versus somebody who can't see beyond those types of things um luckily i, I have vision i can see beyond teal terracotta uh, pepto pink all these things that you just see in homes that are still structurally really great they just need some freshening up and you can't get a manicure for a couple weeks because you're constantly painting but the end result i think is pretty rewarding to know you've kind of put in that um, little bit of work to make to make it really look new and fresh that's my thought anyway I just remembered I had a light fixture I needed to pick up from the lighting store, like forever. And while the lady's in the back, I'm looking at some amazing chandeliers. I really want to change my chandelier in my dining room. And I really think I'm going to get this one. I just love it. I feel like it's the touch of modern that I like, but a little bit traditional and kind of glam at the same time. I also really, really, really like this chandelier, but I'm not a baller and it's $500. I just got home after working pretty late. It's almost eight o'clock on Friday night and I came home to this. There's no wall in the kitchen. There's no wall. There's no countertops. There's nothing is lazy Susan's in the cabinets for surfaces to like prep food on i don't know and the cooktop that's it and now i can't get a sheetrock guy out here until sometime next week and i can't get my countertop install guy out here till next week so either i'm gonna have to drink smoothies like all day every day or I'm about to gain about 50 pounds on fast food and takeout because I really don't know what I'm supposed to do with this kitchen oh my gosh even the light switches I don't have light switches anymore those were brand new the cabinet let's go around the cabinet that was up here oh hi hole in the wall literally fell out of the ceiling like it fell it it took out my husband and it took out the light switches and it put a big chunk in the sheetrock. And I have to be okay with all this. I am just trusting the process and knowing that I have wanted this kitchen for so long. I guess this is how you get it. You just have to live in a mess. Oh man, really hope these contractors can get over here sooner than later. This is not going to be a very fun holiday season.